So what we're going to talk about today are some of the basics of modeling in Blender. Modeling basically just means um, making an object. Uh, that's essentially what you're doing is you're going to be forming a 3D object. And in this case, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be forming our, um, the table for our little collision here that we've built for the cube and the sphere. And uh, we'll be doing that very simply by using a couple of, of uh, what we call modifiers. And modifiers are um, little, I don't know, kind of programs that they have that make using uh, or making objects a lot better. So the first thing that you kind of have to realize about modeling an object in Blender is that there's two modes in Blender, in case you don't know this already. There's just object mode, which is what we use to um, animate things and, and move things around. And then there's edit mode. And so if I click on the tabletop that we have created and I go into edit mode, you can do it two different ways. You can go down here and you can click and you can go into edit mode or you can hit the tab key. And so I'll oftentimes say the phrase tab into edit mode. That's what I mean is just hit the tab key when you've got an object selected and now you are inside the object um, and you can actually change its shape uh, very specifically. So um, there are three basic parts to any object. Again, a little bit of review for some of you maybe, but uh, at the same time it's important. The first kind of uh, part you have is a vertice, and a vertice literally is an individual point, okay? And you can grab those points and you can change the way an object works or looks by manipulating the points. The second thing that we have is an edge, and an edge is the line that's drawn between two points, okay? And you can, by selecting two points, holding the shift key down, or you can go down here and you can go to edge select mode, and you can right click on an edge, and then you can alter or move or manipulate a whole edge. And lastly, we have a face, and the face is basically the fill that happens between four vertices. Um, or three vertices, but we'll just say an enclosed area. So there's a, f uh, a face right here on the end of this, and again, I can grab that and I can manipulate it, move it, whatever I want to do. And you'll see that by doing that, it changes um, how, the, how the object is manipulated based upon which one I use. And as you start to get ex more experience in ma manipulating these things and building objects, you'll understand which one you want to use a little bit more often. Sometimes I'm really lazy if I want to select an edge instead of just clicking the edge select, I'll just shift and right click onto two different um, vertices which basically does the exact same thing. A lot of times I'll say points by the way, I'll say uh, points instead of vertices. Um, that's coming from my <coughs> Adobe experience, you know, at the end of a Bezier curve or whatever their points and points have handles, and so I just call them points. But these are not points in the, um, in the strictest sense. They are vertices. So what we want to do <coughs> is we want to give our table legs. So the first thing that we can do to kind of help this, oh, one of the ways that you uh, deselect things is hit the A key, by the way. A deselects, and then if you hit it a second time, it selects everything. So it just cycles through select all, basically. Um, <clears throat> we're going to use a thing called the loop, cut, and slide. Loop, cut, and slide, if I click on that button, I can then go and if I hover over the edge a little bit and left click, you'll see that little pink line, left click, that now adds a series of vertices and then I can slide it along my object, okay, and then left click again to lock it down. And so what you can see now is I've actually created a whole new set of vertices. And if I go to face select mode, I can now take this and I can grab this and you can see how it would change the shape of the object. So what we're going to do to create a uh, loop cut or I mean to create a table is we're going to do a series of loop cuts. Let me undo that. The first one that I want to do is I'm going to do a loop cut here and here in the shape of a plus right down the center line of the um, object. Now this is really important to do this first. Let me show you why. If I take a loop cut and I click and I slide, when I do a second loop cut, that loop cut comes in at the center between this vertice here and that vertice there, or I should say that edge and that edge. 
So if I really want to create loop cuts in the center of the object, here and here, okay, I want to do them first. So let me undo that. And so I'm going to hover here. I'm going to left click once. I'm not going to move the mouse. I'm going to left click again. That has just given me a loop cut right down the x-axis. Now I'm going to um, <clears throat> do another loop cut right here over like that. Left click and left click again. That gives me a loop cut right along the y-axis. Now the reason why I'm doing this is because I'm going to use another modifier called the mirror modifier. And the mirror modifier is going to help us a lot. So, but before we get to them, I'm going to be all dramatic with the mirror modifier. <clears throat> so I'm not going to apply it now. I'll show you what, what it does later. So the next thing I'm going to do is now I'm going to loop, cut, and slide, and I'm going to create the edges of the table, and then we'll flip on the bottom, and we're going to pull the leg of the table down. So I'm going to hit loop, cut, and slide, and I'm going <clears> to <throat> just do this down here like this, bring it down like that, roughly 10% or so up, you know, and I'll do another one here like so, and I'll bring that over, and now I'm going to do two more like that, and again like that. And what I've essentially done is I've created a space here in the bottom by which we're going to pull the leg out uh, of the table. So now I can go to face select mode, right click. Now if I just grab the face, it's going to do that. And that's not so pretty. Okay, That's not what we want to do. Now what you could do is you could loop cuts and everything and then finally pull this out. Or the easy thing to do is what we call an extrusion. An extrusion is a term <clears throat> that means taking a two-dimensional shape and pulling it into a three-dimensional shape. So if I just am in face select mode and I hit the E key, that will extrude a shape. And if you're not careful, sometimes it'll go all wonky on you and go off into different directions. So what I do is I hit the E key, I left click immediately. There is a whole new set of vertices and edges and faces there. You just can't see it because it's right on top of each other. And then I'm going to stretch this down, OK? And now by stretching that down, you can see I've got a table leg. And I'm just going to make it the length that, uh, that it is, um, <clears throat> just like that. Um, and just do what essentially looks right. Now, I could keep going and try and do that exactly the same on the other three corners. But you know what? I'm lazier than that, number one. Number two, I know that there's an easier way to do it. So instead of doing that, we're actually going to delete the other three corners of the table. So I'm going to switch back to vertice mode, and I can start clicking on all these vertices. Now, there's a faster way of doing it than that. I'm going to hit the Z key, or go to wireframe mode, and this will help me a little faster. But if you don't do that, you can still do this. Hit the C key, and that gives you circle selector. And the circle selector just paints a selection. Spin around, right click to get out of circle selector, spin around, hit the C key, there we go. Now I've got all those vertices painted, they're all selected, and I hit X, and I'm going to delete those vertices. Now I've got one quarter of a table. Woohoo. What's that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All objects are actually inherently hollow in uh, Blender. Well, kind of, sort of, yes and no. Um, but yeah, it is, once you delete it like that. Um, <clears throat> and that actually becomes really important once we start dealing with texturing. So it's really important that your table has width. Um, and we'll talk about that later. So now, to create the other three legs uh, in an easy manner, I use my wrench. I go to the mirror modifier. And it does x. And then I check y. And now it just does whatever I did on the one leg. It does on the other three. And it's cool. If I grab one and I do this, you can see that it automatically copies it all the way across. If I grab all four of these with the Shift key and I move it in, you can see how it's going to modify my table. Now, <clears throat> there are some options here in the mirror modifier, but really only one that we're worried about, and that's clipping. Um, 
And clipping allows you to, or keeps you from doing something bad. So let's, let's go this. See how I can cross that? I might want that for certain tables, right? But if I don't want to do that, I cl click the clipping on, and once I hit the middle, you can see how it will not allow me to go through the center axis of the object. So there's some benefits to that, and there's some negatives. Um, you know, like I said, you might want the legs to go crisscross like that, in which case you would want to turn clipping off. However, you've got to be really careful with that because um, if I just say select all here, and then I move this away, you can see I can actually break the table into pieces. Or worse off, usually, is if I move them too close together, I've actually got mesh on mesh, like two sets of meshes here, and that would make it a real mess when I um, start doing some texturing. So uh, you want to make sure that you, usually you want clipping on. Let's just put it that way. The other thing that's really important to um, understand is make sure that the center of your object, which is this little dot that's right here, see that little yellow dot right there? Make sure the center of your object is in the center of the object physically, because the mirror modifier actually works around this point. And so if, the mirror mod if this point is like over here, then the mirror modifier won't work very well. And one of the ways to fix that is actually just to um, turn clipping off, move everything away from each other, then turn clipping back on, and then move it back into the center of the object until they kind of connect. And then you will have reconnected your table, essentially. And you can then stretch it out, make it a little bigger, whatever you need to do to make the table work exactly how you want it to. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to continue making this table. And you can start to uh, do all sorts of fancy things with it um, using the same exact um, uh, techniques that I just showed you. So for instance, Let's just say I wanted to have the leg come in and then come back out. Let's say I wanted to make it a little fancier. Loop, cut, and slide. Click like that. I can slide it up or down. Left click. And now I can click on the four on the bottom here. And I can take that and I can move that like this. So now I can have like a, you know, like a cool looking table. It looks a little different. And what's neat is now all four legs are going to look identical at the same time. Um, maybe, maybe I wanted to do something even uh, more different. Maybe I want to, um, let me undo this, have like uh, crossbars that like match up so I could loop cut again. And then I could take face select mode, take that, hit the E key, extrude, and because clipping is set on, as soon as they touch in the middle, they will become one object, just like that. Now I've got a table with uh, crossbars. And then I could still grab the bottom face and kind of move it around and have a little fun with it. I could also grab, hold the Shift key down, select all of these. Oops, I didn't get everything. I should have done that with edge select mode because I didn't get that face, but that's OK. So I can grab all of these, make sure you get the inside and the out. And I can still kind of drag these in and make kind of a funky shaped table there. And that, I mean, that's pretty cool. So I can, I can totally do that. If I want to move this inward, get edge select mode. Grab those four edges. And now I can just kind of slide that around. And it will mess up the edges a little bit here, but that's OK. It's, it's not going to do that big of a deal. If it really bothers you, just grab all the edges. You know, like this. And then you can slide it this way if you wanted to. A lot of shift click, shift right click, shift right click, shift right click. But now I can kind of slide this up. See, now I wouldn't want to do that because that's changing the edge of the table. Um, but anyway, you can just, the easy thing to do is just to grab the four edges that are there, and you can just move it around. And the fact that these, ang these are angled now is not going to really ma matter much to the table at all.
okay? So I can bring them in a little bit and create a little bit more of an edge. And you can see I've got a pretty cool table started just with a couple of very simple things. So in review, the mirror modifier helps you keep it symmetrical. That's number one. Um, in order to start that, you have to delete the four quadrants, the, or three of the four quadrants in the object. And you do that by highlighting all the vertices around the edge of the cube, and you hit X. Then you can add your mirror modifier. Then you just use loop cuts and slides to create a rectangle by which you can extrude the leg out of the bottom of the table. And this kind of stuff is really cool. And you can, you can keep going. I mean, if you wanted to, I could take this, bring this closer to the edge of the table, like that. Whoops. I could, well, I could do that. Um, just grab it like this. And then I was thinking, actually, I could take this edge here and bring it down, kind of create like a little beveled look. Take these guys, bring them over a little bit more to create a little bit more of a, of a stricter bevel. And uh, yeah, that's starting to look pretty cool. So you could have like a beveled look to the table. There's all sorts of cool things that you can do that will really help you know, make this uh, unique. And uh, we'll talk more about dealing with like this, this, the corners kind of funky. See how the corner's looking? Whoops, where did it go? There it is. The corner's kind of funky. We'll deal with that in a, another demo. But that's basically the idea of that. And um, hopefully that gives you some good ideas. Um, we'll talk about making it smoother if you want to make it round. Um, don't do that right now. Just get the basic form done. And we'll use a different mod modifier called the sub uh, subsurface division modifier to, um, to make it rounded. And uh, that one's a pretty cool modifier, too. But we'll just stick with this one for now and uh, let you guys get started on that. Okay, any questions?